Lord Jesus, I come to you before your throne and I lay my burden. I lay my burden at your feet. I lay my burden, Lord Jesus. The word of God reminds us that whosoever is heavy laden, The Lord Jesus tells us, whosoever is heavy laden, to come at his feet and lay his burden, and he will find rest. Rest in our spirit, rest in our heart, rest in our soul, rest in our mind. You see, one of the burden is the thought of your mind that goes in every direction trying to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to do, where and what and so, so forth. And the way to lay the burden at the feet of Christ is when you realize that after all, regardless of how you think and you will think and you will think, you will think, your thought does not change anything. And you come to the place of saying, Lord, you know what? I cannot change anything. But what I can change is my view and my perception on the surrounding. Hallelujah. If the surrounding does not change, uh, I cannot allow the surrounding, the circumstances to continue to affect me. Because I'm supposed to live at peace and at rest. So when you literally put your burden in the hands of Christ, you know that the circumstances may not have changed, but you know that you are at rest. Hmm. Ah, Jesus Christ. Father, I bless your name, Lord Jesus, for all that you do. I bless your name, Lord God, because you are true. I bless your name, Lord God, because you lead us. I bless your name, Lord God, because you speak unto us. I thank you, Lord God, for the things that you shall do right now and for the things that you have already done. Let your word of truth, Lord God, saturate us. Let your word of truth, Lord God, help us. Let your word of truth, Lord God, set us free and provide unto us what we need in order to continue into the work, into the ways, and into what you have called us to. We bless your holy name now and evermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Lord, I come at your throne to lay down my burdens at your feet. Hey, hiya. Ah, Lord Jesus. I think it was two or three days ago. The Lord spoke to me and he said the power of transformation which is a word for today when I heard that word I say ah the power of transformation let me explain to you something in electricity a transformer you know what that is a transformer what does he do? When current comes in and there is a certain type or a certain, we, 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 we can call it like, because from outside you have the DC current, right? And then you have the AC current, right? 
between the DC current and the AC current, which one is greater? The DC. The direct current. Hallelujah. The AC current is what you use in order to plug in your TV, your cell phone, your computer. If your, 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 your computer is plugged directly into the DC current, the charge that we get in, we destroy the computer. Am I right? So the DC current is used for certain type of items that are built for it. So you cannot put into a DC outlet your AC device. So for you to receive, there is a change, a transformation that happened so that the, even if the load of the power of the electricity is too much, you can still kind of divide it equally so you can keep on running. Are you what I'm saying? So your house is being received, is being fed, is being uh, provided with power, and you continually have electricity in your house. In the spiritual realm, this is true, because remember, anything we see in the physical comes from the spiritual. In the power of transformation is that the Lord in the book of John chapter 2. Let's read first. Let's read the word of God so we can build upon the word. Amen. Bring me John chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 1. Verse 1 all the way to verse 12. John chapter 2, mm -hmm. starting from verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the third day. And the third day. Now, at this point here, the Lord Jesus already had some disciples. How many dis who know, who know how many disciples he had at, at that time? No. At the time of John chapter 2. Because he, he, he just, remember, by then, the Bible said that he was, he was the first miracle, right? So how many, uh, yes, he has about five. Hallelujah. And the one that he had were the first one who stepped in. One of the disciples was who? Peter. And who? Andrew. Who was Andrew? The brother of Peter. Peter was, went and told to Andrew concerning Jesus Christ. And who Philip told to who? Nathanael concerning Jesus Christ. By the time they arrive, you have the mother of Jesus called Mary, who was also at the marriage, the wedding. So they come in the wedding, and everybody's looking at everybody. You know, when wine is uh, over in the time of uh, the custom of the Jew, what it means is that you have been really bad into managing the stuff of the wedding. Like, because wine in the feast in the Jewish culture at the time cannot finish. So you should have known how many of the guests you would have received. And you should have known how many of the guests would have been drinking. Even now, when you have a wedding, people who come, if at the moment of time there is no food, you yourself, you know, it's a shame. <laughs> Am I right? As of today, you are at the wedding, you are sitting, and then you see everybody standing with the cup, and then you say, what's going on? And then the MC say, ah, there is no more food and wine. <laughs> there is no more water. There is no more drink. That's the reason why today, even our wedding, uh, for our wedding, we, we always plan more than the people who are supposed to come. And normally people eat two or three times. <laughs> and then some also come with their bags. They, they come with their bags with bags inside. <laughs> so you got to calculate all those ones and make your plan accordingly. So, but 
at the time of the wedding of Canaan, uh, 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 Cana, Cana, the the guy who was the master, he did not plan all this. He miscalculated exactly what to do. In your life, you can come to a place where you miscalculate everything that you do. And you think, ah, if I do this way, this way will happen. If I do that way, this way will happen. And then you make, make all your line and then your list and then you are certain that you're going to work. But you are in the midst of it and then suddenly dryness. And then you're like, before I started, I make the plan and I know those plans should have work. And I'm in the midst of it and suddenly everything dry. Somebody say power of transformation. Because let me tell you something. When you understand the power of transformation and everything is dry because of the sun, you take the sun and then you make it become power. When everything is dry because of the sun, you take the sun and then you generate it to make electricity. Do, do you understand? You would think, ah, I was trying to plant some, but there was no rain. And the sun came more than the rain I was uh, uh, looking for. And all your plants are dying. And you're thinking, what should I do? But the sun is telling you, I am here to transform your life. To turn your life from just planting into powering. Is somebody understanding this one? You see, the power of transformation does not limit you based on the circumstances. The power of transformation calls you to use what is decayed so you can make something out of it. In another word, you are not limited. It is when it is over is when you start. Somebody say, I start when it's over. Oh, Lord Jesus. If you understand the power of transformation, you will not be so discouraged when things are stopped. The Bible says the Lord Jesus came. Let, let, let's go back. Let's go back to the word. Let's read the word. Let's read the word. So, and the third day. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. And both Jesus was called and his disciples mm -hmm. to the marriage. Mm -hmm. And when they wanted wine, mm -hmm. the mother of Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. They have no wine. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Mm -hmm. His mother said unto the servants, mm -hmm. Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Mm -hmm. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, mm -hmm. containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, mm -hmm. and knew not whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And said unto him, mm -hmm. Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. Mm -hmm. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Mm -hmm. The beginning of miracles, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth. His glory. Mm -hmm. And his disciples believed on him. And the disciples believed on him. We can stop at 11 to, uh, verse 11. Give me verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage. In Cana of Galilee, 
and the mother of Jesus was there. You know what represent mother? You know what represent the mother of Jesus for you and I? The difference is nothing. You know why? Because Mary, she carried Jesus in her belly. But we are supposed also to carry the Holy Ghost in our belly. Let, let me explain again. She carried Jesus in the belly. Now remember, everything that was done in the word of God was not done just to be done. It was done for a purpose and for a imagery of prophecy. Okay? The Bible said that out of our belly will come what? Of so meaning we are carrying something in our belly. In another word, the spirit that is in you and that is in me can cause us to change circumstances according to the faith that worketh or according to the power that worketh. The Bible says, according to the power that worketh in us. Even though the power is of God in his hands, the word of God transfer that power to us from the DC to the AC, and we can distribute that power to any outlet. I, 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 is somebody understanding what I'm saying? So, Mary, or you and I, we present ourselves before Jesus. We are invited into a place where we are supposed to rejoice. Wedding. You are supposed to rejoice in your marriage. You are supposed to rejoice in your finances. You are supposed to rejoice in your health. You are supposed to rejoice in your businesses. But when you start, amen, you are supposed to rejoice. But here comes that everything that you are supposed to rejoice for is getting dry. Are you know what I'm saying? And now, the, the, verse 2, give me verse 2. The Bible says, and both Jesus was called and his disciple. Why did they call Jesus and his disciple to the marriage? Do you understand why? The Lord Jesus was around with his disciple. Certainly Mary, I said certainly, Mary was over there because she probably knew the people and she was helping with the different, the different, you know, activities or whatever. Because for her to identify that they don't have any more wine, she ought to be somehow involved inside. I even I'm saying. It's an assumption. But I believe that because she has to be somehow involved inside, when they call Jesus and his disciple, the word of God will give us a clue by saying, because of what happened, the disciple believed. So listen, the Lord is taking you with him in a place where things were going to get dry. Are you following He's taking you with him in a place where things going to get dry. Things going to get stuck. Things going to get finished. Now, Mary, who knows the disciples, or saw the disciples, saw also the Lord Jesus, she could have told to the disciple, yo, <laughs> do something. But she addresses directly the Lord Jesus. Not only because she knows him, but also because she understands that there are certain situations you cannot ask somebody to pray for you. Do I make sense? There are some situations where you need the finger of God to intervene. Because the burden that you're carrying, if you transfer to some people to pray for you, they will pray based upon the word that you have said, not upon the burden that is inside of you. 
Do that make sense? So, although it is good that we pray for each other, as the Bible says, there are some situations you need to see the finger of God in your life. And in those places, that's the places where you really feel dry. Where you yourself, you, you know that dryness <laughs> and wilderness have, have married in your life. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. So, regardless of the amount of prayer of people, you still feel dry. Regardless of the encouragement of people, you still feel dry. But here's the thing. God is trying to show you that he has put something in you that we call the power of transformation. Let me explain. We get there. Tell to somebody we're going to get there. <laughs> Give me back the word, please. Verse 3. Read for me. And when they wanted wine. And when they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus said unto him. Said unto him. They have no wine. Now what does it mean? It means that she was able to observe certain movements. You are supposed to also pay attention. The Bible said that we ought to be what? Prudent and wise. We, we have to be aware. The Bible said we are not ignorant of the devices of the, the devil. So we got to be aware to understand the season and the times. To see that when things are shifted in a way that is not supposed to shift, we need to step in. Because if we are waiting by saying, oh, let the will of God be done. <laughs> you, 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 you are Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there are situations where you need to understand the circumstances. So at the time of Mary and the canon, I mean the, the, the marriage, the thing is that they came to a place where they have no more wine. She observed it. Whether she was drinking herself or not, I know she was observing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, and they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus. Now, when you see between the first phrase and the comma, there is no correlation. Because the Bible said they wanted wine. But there is a story that is not written over there. They wanted wine. So did they go to the mother of Jesus? Did they go to the husbandman? Did they go to who? They wanted wine. Ow. They wanted wine. Then coma. And the mother of Jesus said unto him. So did the mother of Jesus wanted wine? Or did the people come to, I even what I'm saying. What he means is that God does not care about what people say. He does not care about what the situation tells unto yourself. All he wants you to realize is whether you understand that even if it's not the time, you can move it. You can be thinking, hey, normally in the process of time, the season is that God has made every season, day and night, and rain and sun, and I must need to wait for the season of the spring or the season. But if you understand the power of transformation, regardless of the season you are in, something can happen. Read it for me. And I wanted wine. The mother of Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. they have no wine. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. You see, the power of transformation does not depend on the time frame. The power of transformation depends on your realization of it. The hour, the time for him to reveal and to manifest has not yet come. Are you what I'm saying? But what she tapped into it was not the time to come. It was the power for transforming. Do I make sense? She was not praying into the time. 
she was praying into the power of transformation. So she told him, I know the time is not yet come, but to transform, and that power is already here. So what I'm calling on is not to say, Lord, let your will be done. No, what I'm calling on is say, Lord, I know it is your will. <laughs> you can transform it. That's why I say when you understand the will of the Lord, you do not pray random prayer. Most of the time, when a Christian says, let your will be done, it's because it's discouraged. <laughs> but you see, that's not faith. Is it faith? God says the power of transformation is when you realize that the dryness can be turned into power of electricity. The guy who realized that the sun can bring about, uh, the sun can uh, generate electricity. Until then, it was not something unknown. I'm certain that somebody throughout the ages have known it. Are you what I'm saying? Because the Bible said there is nothing new under. So if there is nothing new under the sun, what does it mean? It means that the knowledge that is provided is already there. You got to realize it in order to tap into it. If not, you will wait. You will wait for the time. But the problem is that the time is not yet to come. Until you understand why is the sun burning on you, you will know that it is for the purpose to have you transform it. Let me explain something. I will take an example. One time, um, not long ago, somebody reached to me with our activities we're doing, and the person was not convinced of her of buying what he wanted to buy. And as we were discussing, he told me, no, you see, this is a big investment. If I put all this money in this uh, item, uh, he has to serve. And then I said, okay, what do you need in that item? He said, well, um, I need this, 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 this. And eventually, the, what he wanted was not in that item. So normally, in that position is dryness. Because... The guy wants something, he wants to invest, but what you have to give to him does not fulfill what he wants. So at that point, you yourself, you know you finish. <laughs> I, I, I what I'm saying. Because somebody will not just give you money for free <laughs> in the sense of business. So the guy wants to buy it. But what you're selling for him or to him or what you're proposing is limited. And I remember I was standing somewhere over here. And then I told him, I said, brother, even though what you're asking for is not in that. Now my mind started now getting into the place of transformation. I need to be able to let him know that even though he does not want it because of what there is not in I can tell him it will benefit because of what that is already in. Do you understand what I'm saying? So instead of having me, let him tell me he cannot have it because there is not. I'm rather positioning myself to tell him why he should have it because there is in. <laughs> so I'm transforming the story to tell him no. Instead of looking at what you don't have inside, look at what you have Before I finish, the Holy Ghost sees him. <laughs> he pay cash. Because you see, all that was to be done is, he, and he told me something. He says, listen, 
I'm going to invest into it because you are passionate about what you do. So I transformed by the power of God the dryness of what I did not have into something. So now the guy, all he was able to see was a passion about what I was telling him. Transforming power. You are in a situation where you don't know how to do. Where God says, look around. The same thing that you will believe are for no good. We call it recycle. See, some people, they trash the, the how I call it, uh, like scrap, I would say that. The metal, they trash the, if the stove doesn't work, the appliances, thank you. So they just look for trashing it, that's it. Meanwhile, there are people, when they take it, they transform it. The power of transformation covers everything. The power of transformation makes you understand that you are able to get out of something even when it looks like dirt. Why? Because we were dirt and the Lord caused us to become human beings. So if the spirit of God is in you, then you should be able to understand that the situation is not for the end. The situation is to give you an opportunity to apply your faith. Somebody said power of transformation. <laughs> what can you transform simply because you are in the Lord and the Lord is in you? Mary said, you see, she didn't ask, is it your time? She, she, she knows that she should not be going into what is not. She knows she has to go into what is. Then prayer where you pray and then you say, uh, I don't know. Certainly this was. Mm, mm, mm. You have to go to the place where you know that the will of God is. And because the will of God is, let the spirit of God that is in you help you transform this. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the word, please. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. You know, the same word last time that there, some said that he was a pharaoh. In the book of Genesis, around 40, 45 something. He told to the people when there was great famine and a great disaster, he told to the people, that whatever Joseph say unto them, they must do. So that story brings me back in Genesis and let me understand that the mind of Joseph was a mind of transformation. Because you see, when there was famine, he transformed that into riches. Are you what I'm saying? When everybody was broke, <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. When there was, there was famine, he did not see inside of famine the end. He saw an opportunity. So his mind was not looking into the limitation. His mind was looking into the opportunities. Because see, you have the vision, and then the king tells you the vision, and God gives you the revelation. But the reason why God revealed unto you something is that he can use you for that thing. Joseph was revealed the mind of God concerning the dream of Pharaoh. But that was because God wanted to use Pharaoh, uh, I say Pharaoh, Joseph. So when everyone thought that, hey, 
that was the end of the the, the, the end of the story. This one, there is famine. People gonna die. The Bible said the entire world was in famine. The entire world. I was about to say even the United States, <laughs> and I realized they were not there <laughs> because <laughs> they were not there yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that world at that time, that ancient world at that time, they were all in famine. The Arab were there because they were the one who brought uh, Joseph in a uh, in a uh, the Arab to be around for a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So. Now you have God speaking into the life of Joseph. And now we have the same sound coming in now in the marriage of Canaan. And the same sound comes to us. Last time we talked about Jericho, right? We say, ah, Jericho was in the time. And when Jericho came again around the blind man, he said, ah, there is something that is about to happen. I'm going to tap into it. The Lord comes. The, um, uh, the mother of Jesus comes. And then she said, they have no wine. And then she does not receive answer of yea from him. She does not hear him saying, okay, I'm going to do something. Does she? Read back verse 4. Turn off, cease. Okay, let's try again. Jesus said mm -hmm. unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. And in another word, is a, a no. You see, there was a woman, a Syrophoenician. She came to the Lord Jesus. And then a child was possessed with a demon. And she said, please, master, have mercy on me. My daughter is possessed with a demon. The Bible said that the disciple told him, stay away, stay away. And the Lord Jesus came and he says, listen. Finally, he came and he said, listen. It's not good for me to give the food of the children to the dogs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She stepped into the power of transformation. She said, what I know is that he's right here. You know what I'm saying? So I know he's already here because I all I was trying to do was to have his attention. So instead of being distracted by what he's saying, I'm going to tap into the presence of Jesus. Some of you, the power of transformation must need to catapult you. Instead of being offended by what he's saying, he's already here. The miracle maker has now had attention on me. If you want to tell me crazy and mad and mad, Jesus, you hear, you're going to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You already here. Why should I be concerned about what so and not or not? The power of transformation sets your thought straight. And you are focused on what God says you're going to achieve. And every, every time you hear something contrary to what God says, it sounds in your mind, yes. When God says something, and then people say, deny, deny, deny. When you have the power of transformation in your mind, it means approve, approve, approve. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? Because you know... Let me put it this way. You know that every time somebody tells you no into what God said yes, it's because he is accumulating the... Mm. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Let me explain. A little child, if you put money in the bank for the child, until the child grows and you, you know, give the money to the child... Anytime you put money in the bank for the child, the child has already his name in that bank. But that child, if he asks for chupachu, you know chupachu? <laughs> no, no, chupachu is a, uh, 
that 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 bonbon uh no the candy and then the people the children eh? lollipop there you go lollipop yeah in my country we call it chupa chu <laughs> hallelujah so the act the, the child is asking for lollipop and you say no but there is money in the bank that can buy that lollipop are you from know saying So the no does not mean you are finished. The no means when the day will come and you receive that money, the lollipop, you will buy until you finish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So your, your interest is growing in the bank. The amount of the money that is being deposited in your name is growing. Don't be concerned about the lollipop. So when somebody tells you no, God is increasing just your interest. When God says do something and you go there and they say no, God is increasing your interest. Because every no you will hear, we have to be moved to Proverbs 7. Are you what I'm saying? Every no, that, because God is the one who said go and do. So instead of being discouraged, step into the power of My wife used to tell me, and she's still saying it. She said, this thing that the devil is doing, I don't know what God is about to do, but whatever he's about to do is big. That's why you see the head of the devil. That's why you see the enemy just uh, pulling out his tentacles because he's trying to distract you. He's trying to shift your focus so that uh, you will be distracted. Jesus said unto her, the woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. What she heard, he did not say I'm not able to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He did not say I do not want to do it. He said my hour is not yet come. But when she heard it, for her, it means yes. I have what I'm saying. And the Bible says she turns now to the disciple. And what happened, verse 5? Verse 5. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. <laughs> One time I went to uh, Sam's Club. I needed to buy a... Uh, I needed to buy a... Uh, uh, what's that? Milk. For our little, whether the boy or some, somebody, one of the children. And the milk was finished. And then when I arrived, it was 8.05. And they closed some, some club. I, was, I think I was with my wife. She said, but it's already closed. <laughs> I said, somebody, I still were there. I'm going there. <laughs> so... When I heard it was already closed, it doesn't mean anything. I said, when I go, that door must open. I was not going in this, in, in, I was going knowing that I will go in and I will get that milk and I will come out. So, when I come, the door does not open. I push a little bit, he open. I said, thank you. <laughs> I said, if you could not open for me, I will help you to open. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I enter in. As soon as I enter in, there is a lady that was around. There. So I saw, I, I did like, I did not see her. I said, my vision and my focus on the milk. <laughs> I should not be distracted by who you are in here. So by the time I walk, She said, hey, sir, 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 sir. <laughs> I, I do like I'm a deaf man. <laughs> so she, she speed up unto me. She said, sir, sir, sir. I, I said, yes. She said, it's already closed. What do you want? You see, she put two phrases in the same time. It's already closed. What do you want? If it's already closed, why do you ask me what do I want? My hearing heard, what do you want? Not it's already closed. 
Are you know what I'm saying? Then I told her, call your uh, manager. <laughs> I escalated the situation automatically. The managers arrive. Yes, sir. I say, I came to buy a uh, milk. And uh, my little boy doesn't have any milk. I didn't have time to get um, uh, to come. But finally, I came. He's already f closed, and I need to buy the milk. She said, but sir, all the cashier are closed. I said, but I have my phone. I can do the scan and go. And then the lady that was uh, saying, no, 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 that lady said, I know even the scan and go is closed. I said, you are the devil liar. <laughs> because the scan and go cannot close. It is my phone. But she was so ready to discourage me, to get me out by the policy that I, she did anything and said anything that was in the top of her mind. But every time I was hearing it, I said, if I spent already five minutes standing there, then I can do six minutes to get the thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why my process is different. And then the lady goes around. She said, but we're sorry, we cannot do that. And why are you working? I said, the milk is over there. <laughs> she said, okay, okay, wait here. But it's only there one day last time. I said, my little milk is over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so the manager went and grabbed the milk for me. Are you know what I'm saying? The power of transformation. Now, this made me understand that whatever you set your heart to, when God is on your side, you can achieve it. Are you know what I'm saying? For it says, if thou delight in the ways of thy God, it shall grant you all the desire of thine heart. Whatever you set your heart to, that is, God is on your side. The Bible says the power of transformation is available. So faith can get you there. And when you arrive, you see it's dry. Then use the power of transformation. You see, there was a guy. He saw a lot of uh, bottles, bottles of uh, uh, water bottles that they trash and in, in Africa. So they trash it all over. So in Africa, in, when I say in Africa, I'm talking about my country, which is Ivory Coast. When they trash all those things, it goes inside the, uh, uh, the waters the seas and stuff like that, and you can see it's, it's polluted from everywhere. So if you ever go to those seashore, you can see like a bunch of uh, garbage. That's, 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 the, that's the normal way. <laughs> so the guy, he came from some country, I don't know where, a white guy. He arrived, he had a bag, and every day he go through that seashore and he pick up the dirt. But the dirt he was picking up was the, the bottles. And he picked up, he put it in his bag. So eventually the people were around looking at him. The little children were laughing. They, they were laughing their head out. And everybody was calling him a crazy man. And one day, they saw, they saw the crazy man on the TV. The crazy man is sitting. And the crazy man is explaining what he was doing with the bottles. Now, the people who call him the crazy man, they were like, hey, we should have sold him the battle. We should have gathered the battle. We should have, we should have. Now they are, hey, if I knew. Hey, si je savais. Hey, if I knew. Because by the time they saw him, if they knew what the guy was doing, they should have been friends with him. Because he was about to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> so he used the battles, and then he did Maison uh, Supiloti. How we say that? Floating, floating, uh, he, he, he did a, a hotel, Hot, uh, yeah, 
hotel, a restaurant, a restaurant. So he did a floating one, and on, on, on the in the midst of the water, and he used all the barrel he collected to put on there so that he can stay afloat. Uh -huh. <laughs> My brother said, wow. <laughs> he became the first one who has done something like this. To this day, go Google it. The guy has made a whole, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a whole complex of a hotel in the midst of the waters with barrels that were being thrown away. What is preventing you to transform the DC power into an AC acceptable? What is preventing you to transform the dryness into power for electricity? Nothing. Except yourself thinking because I heard no, I've heard impossible, then therefore I shall sit down and wait. No, you got to move because the time had to be redeemed. The power for transformation. Shifting the circumstances that are telling you no into circumstances that tells you thank God. Give me back the word, please. John chapter 5. Uh, I say 5. John chapter 2, verse 5. And his mother said what? His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Do you understand what? Uh, do you understand the mindset? She's like, regardless of how I heard it, I know I must move in the prophetic. So I'm going to tell to the people, whatever it tells you, do it. But he didn't tell her he would do something. You know what I'm saying? But she knows who she's talking to. Do you know your God? Whatever he tells you, do it. And now the Bible says what? Verse and 6. Verse 6. And there were set death six water pots of, of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Do, do you see the correlation of two phrases? One is whatever it says, do it. And now the next verse says, and. It means that by the time she understood that she has the power to transform the situation, and happen. Meaning the move then came in. There are certain things that God has already put into the tip of your fingers. And then when he did it, he says, whatever your hand shall touch, shall. Look, look at the scientist. They call them researcher. You know why? Because they keep researching, they find never. No, they never find. It. <laughs> they keep on researching all the time. <laughs> because when they, they, what they thought they found, and then 10 years after, they, 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 they say, ah, it was not the right one. So they keep on researching all the time, right? But anyway, when you look at them, and they are inside the laboratories, every mistake that they do gives them the assurance that they are closed. Because each one of them let them know uh, they should not go that way again. But it is rather this way that they have to do the, uh, the mix. The mixture. If he put CO2 and baking soda, and then it did boom. <laughs> Now he knows he's close to the bomb. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? That's why Jesus Christ said the children of darkness are wiser. What does it mean? 
It means they know how to take the circumstances and turn them around for their good. They know how not to be discouraged. They know how to press. And yet, all they do is not to glorify God. So how much more the children of light, whom God tells you, let your good deed be seen of men, so they may praise your Father that is in heaven. Are you what I'm saying? So you are called to enter and manifest the power of transformation. Because the Lord is already on your side. He already said that your hand will touch and it will prosper. You see, in the power of transformation, when you know that God is sending you this place and then you know you are going that place, when it does not work, you become like a damn scientist in the laboratory. You only know that you are not far. Look at the people who are called the marketer. When they're trying to sell something to you, or they're trying to do a marketing or whatever, or it ads, they do it first time, and nobody answer. Then they understand the formulation of how, and the formula they use is not the one that works. They're not sitting saying, I, I try all, it does not work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They understand that the formula they use is not a good one. They bring another formula. And suddenly, one person answer. And they research onto it to see how did we do it so that the person answer. And they build up on it and they do better. The Lord calls them the children of darkness. If we are to occupy until it comes, then we need to let our mind be transformed by the power of transformation. Hallelujah. And there were set three. Uh, go ahead. And there were set. There six water pot of stone mm -hmm. after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, mm -hmm. containing two or three firkins apiece. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, mm -hmm. and they filled them up to the brim. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. Are you following? These two, give me verse uh, seven. No, no, verse six. Sorry. And there were, and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purif of the purifying of the Jew, containing about two or three firkins a piece. The total was about one hundred and eighty gallons. Now one hundred and eighty gallons. Of wine. This one you can make an entire business with that. But what would the Jesus what, what would Jesus do? Mary comes to him because she knows him. So when you go to God, you must know him. For those who come to the Lord, says the word of God, must first know that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him so i come to him knowing that he is and i come to him knowing that he's a rewarder now the portion sometimes that fail many is that they have tried once and twice and third it does not work, and they just, it should not be the way it's not. Did God tell you it's not his will? You see, until God tells you with clarity, this is not my will, you cannot assume it's not the will of God. Because to know the will of God is, 
Simple. <laughs> what does the word that is his will says? It says, I will be at the head. I will be above and not beneath. So if I find myself beneath, it's for two reasons. One, I did not follow the will. Or two, the Lord told me stay there. So, but if the Lord did not tell me stay there, then it means I did not follow the will. Do that make sense? Because the will is already given. And the problem with the child of God is that he's trying to manufacture an additional will. But you will not hear God talk because God already spoken. And now you will stand in a place by saying, I pray, but I did not hear anything. Did you read the Bible? <laughs> yeah, you, you try to manufacture another manufactory, another, another usine. <laughs> it won't work. It won't work. Because God will not speak to you outside of his. He says, when the spirit comes, he will remind you the word I have spoken to you. But if you do not hear the word, you will remember. <laughs> Hallelujah. So for you to simply know that by the time you have arrived into your faith, and you are born again, and then you have stepped into the power of God. You will know that sometimes when you start with uh, the Lord, uh, at the beginning of your salvation, everything you say, it comes to pass. And then sometimes it happens, after you have matched a little bit, whatever you say, you don't see it. <laughs> but at that point, the Lord is calling you to step into the power of The little child, when he grows and you give him all the money that was in the bank, it up to him to make out of it something. When the Lord has taught you all the ways, he has taught you his ways, he has taught you his mind, he has taught you his word, and now you are in the field, what you got to do is to use it to apply. First, start by doubting. Stop on doubting. Start, first, stop by stopping on doubting. You got to stop doubting. The power of transformation. When that word that is contained in the word transform your mind, the way you think, can only be God. Yesterday I was uh, sharing with the brother. And then he said. He said. For all the time I knew you. Regardless of what you say. Whether in business or not. God is on your lips. Regardless the position you put yourself. Regardless what you do. God is on your lips. And I thought to myself, I say, it's the only thing I know. <laughs> and you go back to Joshua, and the Lord says to Joshua, this word of the Lord shall not depart of your... So you are supposed to carry it everywhere. So in all conversation, you cannot speak all the time without having that word in your mouth. Because it is that word that makes you prosper. Give me verse 8. John chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. Verse 8. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Now here's another type of people. They did not know whether this one. Because when you read verse 9, the Bible says what? Go ahead, verse 9. When the ruler mm -hmm. of the feast had tested the water that was made wine, 
and, and knew not mm -hmm. whence it was, mm -hmm. but the servant which drew the water knew. Mm -hmm. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom mm -hmm. and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. Mm -hmm. And when men have well drunk, mm -hmm. then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Go back. Give me verse 8. Verse 8. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. Now, and looking at this, those who were carrying wine, they did not know the quality of it. You know what I'm saying? They carry the wine and they arrive to the governor, meaning the MC or the organizer or whatever. They arrive to him, they put that in the hand of the guy. The guy tests the wine and he's like, this is better than anything I thought. And that normally, people, they set the bet, uh, uh, the, the, the bad, and then they, they, um, they give, uh, 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 give me again the word, bring, bring it back. The, the the, the, yeah, they, they, they set the, the, the best first, and when people have drunk and now they're satisfied, they put down the bad, right? The word of God says, some people, their best day has already passed. Your best day has come. Are you know what I'm saying? It's not yet to come. Your best day has come. You know what I'm saying? You are in your best days. It's now the time for you to tap in quit. And start now positioning all the strengths to see transformation. Because let me tell you, somebody will not do it for you. If you're at, I was telling to somebody yesterday, I told him, listen, you got to become an employee. And after an employee, you come to become an employer. If the mindset of employee does not change, then you know you are finished. Because you are employee until you become employer. You see, you are like Joseph. You learn to serve until people serve you. But throughout the time that you learn to serve, you will acquire technicality. Are you know what I'm saying? You will acquire understanding. You will acquire strategies. You will acquire skills. Do you think that all those things that you are acquiring is also you will become always an employee? <laughs> Come on. Somebody said to somebody, the power of transformation must change your mind. You see the Hebrew. The Hebrew people, they function as honor. The African people, they function as they have a project. African guy, he always has a project. So when you go in Africa, in certain countries, there is a ministry of the projects in my country. But why the iron ministry of achievement? They have many projects. But when you look for the achievement, you don't find it. And the only achievement you will find, maintenance has not been done. It is also collapsed. <laughs> the mindset. And they pass this mindset to the children. And the children grows. He's in many things. But he's broke. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? Power for of transformation. What God is teaching us is that what he put in your hands is supposed to develop and multiply. When it's not coming, 
you have now to understand, okay, if, you see, if he's not coming, Lord Jesus, help us. Lord Jesus, help us. Lord, help us. <laughs> Listen, you, you can't, there, there was a guy that used to be d doing a, um, a series that they call MacGyver. I, have you ever watched it? MacGyver. Yeah. You don't know him? No. I believe he was somewhere in the 90s or something. That guy. Whatever the situation is, it was a movie. It was a TV show. But whatever the situation is, he can use anything to do anything. And he can solve any issue with anything at any time. He's in a position and people are coming with a, 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 a gun. He's a standing here and all he has is a pen. That pen. <laughs> oh, by the time he finished without pen, the people, <laughs> so he was able to do anything with anything. So I watched it when I was younger. And then I thought to myself, when I grow, I want to become like him. <laughs> but what I did not know is that God has already gave me that grace, okay? Because it was not him who gave me the grace. Amen. So God gave the grace. But what I'm trying to say is that the realization calls me to not back up before anything. And one day, I was in a position at home here. And I was looking around trying to do some work. And everything I try, fail. And I was like, how am I going to do that? I was doing a thing of uh, uh, Crafty Lee, uh, which is the arts. I was uh, making uh, engraved design stuff. And the one that failed the, the most, I start now modifying it. It was not how I saw it. No, how I envision it, how I thought it, but since he failed, I said now re redesign, like put it, and it came out to be the best one that people bought. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The one I thought I missed it, and out to become the best that people liked. What are you waiting? God has already given you on the fingers of your hands to touch and to make it prosper. A man of God one time said, he said there are many people that are afraid to become prosper. And then he said, that is because they always said, oh, you know, the Bible said that the, uh, it is difficult for the rich to enter heaven. So for this reason, they don't want to be prosperous because they want to go in heaven. <laughs> when, when you hear things like this, you understand that the man has been completely Because the Catholic people came. They were trying to steal many things in Africa. So at the time, the Bible was not spread. The Bible was only in one language. And the most of those who understood Latin were few priests. Some of them were not even able to be fluent. They were only doing the recital of the Latin. So the Catholic people came. When I say the Catholic, I'm talking about those who came to overshadow Africa. They came, and when they arrived, they took some of the portion of the word of God that says, Blessed are the poor in heart for the kingdom of for the shall see. So they, they took those, those verses and they preach on it. So many people, whatever they had, they gave it away. And after they gave it away, they become so broke, 
that they said the word the Lord says, bless is the poor in heart. But you see, that verse does not mean bless is a broke. It's not what it means. Poor in heart is not broke. It's not the same. Are you know what I'm saying? The Lord Jesus, was he broke? Tell me, was Jesus Christ broke? And after they have masterminded their spirit because they were only looking for the it was a group of people who were with uh, the colon, colon, what that? colonizers. And they use the word of God to defraud people. To this day, people are still doing it. To this very day. To this very day, there are people who are using the word of God to defraud people. So it's not something new. But you have to come to that place where you understand the will of your father. You got to come to that place where you understand that this was not given to somebody else. It was given to you. It was given to me. The word of God was not given for them. It was given for each one and for me. I, are you know what I'm saying? So the applicability of that word is on me. So when I understand that, at that point, I know that I must now function in that realm of the word. And I mirror myself to the word and where I fail, the word now gives me the, 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 the functionality, gives, gives me the ability to, to make it. I hear what I'm saying. Because now I have something to mirror myself to. I have something to see where I lack. I have something to see where I'm supposed to be. It is my map. You try to arrive to your destination that you don't know. You got to use a map. Because if you don't use a map, I can tell you, if you ever arrive in Nigeria and you don't know your destination and you have asked to Abi and Oga has come to tell you, he said behind the, 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 the tree over there, when you have arrived at the mango tree, if you go left, you will be on your right. <laughs> By the time he gave you that description of that map, you are lost. Because when you arrive to that position, the person they say, ah, ah, I think where you're looking is on the back of a day. <laughs> I, am I lying? <laughs> you don't know the place you're going. You don't have a map. And then you're depending on people to help you get there. I you know what I'm saying? Even Paul, when he didn't have the map, he knew where the sun was. <laughs> he was about to say, if I turn this way, I know that's enough over there. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? So anyway, you don't have a map, you want to get there. But people on whom you depend, many of them have no clue where the destination is. Your map. Tells you your destination. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when I was trying to bless somebody in my heart, I had I had like I had some some kind of like a plan, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm gonna bless this person this way, this way, this way, this way. But the person has no idea. I know what I'm saying. 
But all I'm doing is I'm preparing it and then I'm thinking and I'm building it. I'm like, when he gonna come? He gonna just uh, hit the person like a train hit the car. He will be so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He will be so blessed that he, he, will, he will be crying. <laughs> That's because I'm, 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 I'm making my thought to bless the person. But you see, God is above and beyond. I hear what I'm saying. He's above and beyond. And, and, and when I talk with, with people, uh, sometimes I can tell you something. But you think I'm telling you something. Every word that I say has a purpose. If you don't know me, every word I say has a purpose. So if a man can have in his heart, as the Lord Jesus say, if as bad as we are, we know how to give what? Good things to our children. How much more the father? Now listen, listen, the father, he said, how much more our good father won't give us what? The Holy, you know why? Because it's the Holy Ghost that is contained in the power of transformation. So God is telling you, he's going to give you the Holy Ghost and through the Holy Spirit, you're going to call situation to be. Did you get it? You thought you had the Holy Ghost to simply, okay, that's also the person of the Holy Ghost, but you are supposed to use the power of transformation and shift. Because the comparison that the Lord Jesus did was not just for the sake of doing it. He says, you know how to do good things to give to your children. So the Father will give you the Holy Ghost. Is that the Holy Ghost bad? <laughs> Hallelujah. So instead of or giving you what was manufactured, he's going to give you the manufacturing place. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Instead of giving you the product of the manufacturer, you're going to give you the factory. Are you what I'm saying? Now it's up to you to manufacture what you want from that factory. So you're going to give you the Holy Ghost. The outer. The factory. You need idea. You need inspiration. You need direction. You need clarity. The Lord said you have the factory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You want to understand how to shift the situation? Get out of the... The Lord said you have the factory. And then he says, go. You got the power of transformation. There was a man when I was young. The old man. That whole he with the children. And then he will have all the children come and they will uh, use, I think, kind of like a hammer and break the stones. And then he will give a little money to the children and he gathered the stone that the children broke to become like gravier. I would say gravier. Gravels. And he goes sells those gravels to where he's a... Uh, uh, no, no, no. He's a, he's a contractor. Because people come to him to buy the gravels. But the big rocks, he does not have machine to transform it. So in his mind, you're going to take the children. <laughs> but the children, they were having fun. They were having fun. So myself, I remember when I was young, I like just broke, breaking, 
I just like breaking those things. <laughs> I was having fun. So when I wanted to play, I will come to you. Can I play with your rocks? Even as of today, our children, when they go outside, they see rocks. They want to play with that. So the guy realized that the children like to play with rocks. He said, I need to transform that. <laughs> he said, here, yeah, I have rocks. Play with that. So they play with it until it breaks. And then he takes it, he goes sell it. <laughs> the Bible says the children of the darkness are wiser. He didn't have to exploit nobody. He didn't have to do whatever, whatever to no children. He looked into what they like to do. And he said, eh, just do it. Somebody say, I refuse not to be wiser. A child of the devil cannot, should not be wiser than I. Cannot and should not be wiser than I. The assessment that the Lord Jesus made by saying that they were wiser is to, to, to provoke in you the desire to say no. I must come up. He was not to tell you that uh, you are un unable. He was not to tell you that uh, you are nothing. He was to tell you that, look, they understand the principle. And they yeah, don't have the map, but you have the map. Power of transformation does not depend on the time. It depends in the circumstances in which you find yourself. For the Lord Jesus says, it was not my hour, but transformation happened anyway. Are you what I'm saying? And that word is your map. That more word is telling you the blueprint of something. That word is telling you it details about something. I bless your name, Lord, for each one of us. I thank you, Lord God, that this is your word that you have given unto us. I pray, Lord God, that it shall not fall onto the wrong ground, but it shall fall onto the good ground to bring fruit forth. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that your word of truth is shaping us in order, Lord God, to be able to fulfill your good pleasure. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that every doubt that is still grabbing our hearts and our mind and our spirit and our thought, I pray, Lord Jesus, that in the name of Jesus Christ, those thoughts of doubt now be cast away in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that we be saturated with your understanding. That every place is as you have said. That the soul of our foot shall tread upon, we shall possess. So the understanding of possession, we enter into it. And we let the power of transformation cause us, Lord God, to turn everything into a profitable thing. For you are the one who put in our hands those things in order to glorify you. So, Lord God, you give the seed to the sower. Let the seed be placed into our hands and let our hands be able to seed and let us, Lord God, harvest from what we have put on the ground for it is your good will for us to stand. I bless you for the now and how you do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.